Are you planning a camping trip to Grand Teton National Park? You should. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna share with you why and where to stay at Culture Bay Campground and the surrounding campground locations. Stay tuned. So the first thing you should know is why stay in the Coulter Bay area. That is one of the villages, one of the central hubs of all of Grand Teton National Park. It is really towards the center of all of the other hubs. So Coulter Bay creates a fantastic place for you to call home and use as a home base for the duration of your trip to Grand Teton National Park. And for those of you that think, well, what if I want to spend a lot of time in Jackson in the town? Well, guess what? They actually have a free shuttle service that will take you all the way into Jackson, drop you off, pick you up. It has different time frames and limitations as to how frequently they drop off and pick up, but they will do that for you for free. What does the Coulter Bay Village area offer campers? Well, the amenities are pretty vast. They offer a visitor center, a camp store, they have a convenience store, they have a gas station that also offers diesel fuel, they have two different restaurants. One is a sit-down restaurant that serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and the other one is a takeaway counter that primarily serves pizzas. There are three campgrounds that fall under the heading of Coulter Bay. It's important for you to understand the distinctions between them so that you know that you're booking the correct campground for you and your family. The first one I want to talk about is the largest campground. That is the Coulter Bay Campground. You can book this on recreation.gov up to six months in advance of your stay. The cost is about $50 per night. Now, in the Coulter Bay Campground, the main campground, you can bring an RV. They do have sites that accommodate RVs up to 45 feet in length, and you could stay in a tent. All of these options are available at the Coulter Bay Campground. However, for those of you bringing an RV or for those of you that often car camp, there are not hookups. There are about 13 sites that do offer electricity, but primarily those are reserved for the uh, handicap accessible only sites. So when you do make your reservation at Coulter Bay Campground, you wanna set your expectations to not have any sort of hookups. No electricity, no water spigot right at your site, and certainly no dump station. However, Coulter Bay Campground does have a lot to offer. They do offer fire rings at each campsite, and there, as long as there are no burn bans in place, you can create wood burning fires. Coulter Bay Campground also offers food storage boxes, AKA the bear boxes, and spoiler alert, you're gonna need them. So it does offer those two amenities at each campsite. There are bathhouses at each loop and they do have running water and full flushing toilets. The campground as a whole does offer a dump station. They do offer potable water. They do offer showers. You have to pay for the showers. They are coin operated. Additionally, they do have laundry facilities. There is a camp store and you can get ice and firewood at the camp stores. One thing we wanna point out about the Coulter Bay Campground is just because it says it can accommodate RVs up to 45 feet in length, when we were circling through some of the loops recently, we noticed just how narrow and how tight some of these sites can be. Many of the sites you will see have limits like 25 feet in length. And when they say 25 feet, I would really hesitate to actually bring an RV that is 25 feet in length to this campground because you won't have room for your slides in a lot of these different spaces. There is a lot of shade and you could have extra growth that in addition to the narrow width of the sites, will also keep you from being able to use your slides. So I very much caution you about using your RV in this campsite. You will wanna do specific research about the site that you are selecting. Fortunately on recreation.gov, when you are making your reservation, you can get a sense of what each site has to offer as well as their limitations. There are pictures of each site. Another thing that we noticed this summer as we were driving through is that some of the campsites had standing water and some of them looked pretty flooded out. And a picnic table and a fire at each side. It is extremely tight trying to get through. This one's like a flip. 
Yeah. There's standing water in several of them. It's been an especially wet spring. You do want to read the reviews and be extra attentive to booking your site so that you do not book a site that is prone to this flooding. Additionally, since there is a certain amount of standing water within this campground, there will be some mosquito issues. You'll really want to consider your own camp setup and your mosquito protection when you go stay at Coulter Bay Campground. The second type of campground that you can enjoy at Coulter Bay is the Coulter Bay RV Park. Now, this is pretty rare because this is an NPS operated campground that was built specifically to offer full hookups to all of our RV friends. Up to six months in advance, you can go to recreation.gov and reserve your RV full hookup site in this shady campground in Coulter Bay. Prices are around $112 a night. It's important that you understand that you do not have fire rings at these campsites and wood burning fires are not allowed in the Coulter Bay RV Park. The maximum length for your RV to stay in the Coulter Bay RV Park is 45 feet. These sites were created to accommodate RVs. So were I taking an RV, even 20 feet, definitely any larger than 20 feet in length up to the Coulter Bay campgrounds, this is the campground I would probably choose. I think your RVing experience will be far more comfortable, not just because you have the full hookups, but also because the sites were created in consideration of RVing in the space you need on either side and to really be comfortable in that RV. The Culture Bay RV Park guests also have access to the same sort of amenities as the other folks at the Culture Bay campground. They're adjacent to one another. So that ice, that firewood that you're not allowed to burn, and the bathroom facilities, the coin-operated laundry facilities, and the coin-operated showers are all there and available to the Coulter Bay RV Park guests as well. The last type of camping that you can do at Coulter Bay is really cool. This is a very different option and it books up very quickly. It is called the Coulter Bay Tent Village. And what they've done is they have set up canvas army-like tents and each of these tents will accommodate up to six people. They include four beds, including bunk beds. These are available from May through September. There is no water and no electricity. It is primitive camping for the most part, except it just saves you the hassle of bringing your own tent and setting it up, as well as bringing the bed pad because you can use the pads that are available to you. It's sort of like the camper cabins that you would get at KOA, only if you were staying in just a canvas hut instead of the wooden hut. The other cool thing about these camper tents at Coulter Bay is that it does allow for dogs. The problem is you probably will not want to leave your pet at this site during the day when you leave. It is only a canvas enclosure, and especially if you have a dog that's prone to any sort of anxiety or it's just a powerful dog generally, the dog could possibly escape the canvas. You'll wanna have your dog with you every time you leave this canvas tent. In these tents in the tent village, you will not have your own bathrooms. You will be using the bathhouses along with the other Coulter Bay campers. So that means that you do have the flush toilets and the running water, you have the pay showers, the pay laundry facilities, and then the other sort of amenities that are available at the camp store. These cabins also are not cooled. You can make your reservations at recreation.gov up to six months in advance, and they run about $98 per night. They are very, very popular, so I suggest that you get in on the opening date and minute that the reservations go on sale. These are your three main campground options for when you stay at Coulter Bay Village in Grand Teton National Park. Other things that you'll be able to find in the village include the marina where you can take boat tours, you can take rafting trips, you can rent kayaks, you can bring your own SUPs and enjoy Jackson Lake that way. You can also take trail rides. There are just a lot of recreational opportunities from the Coulter Bay location. So we feel confident that as long as you make the right selection in terms of your campground, you're gonna camp with great success and create wonderful memories of your time in Grand Teton National Park. Please continue to join me here where I will post consistent updates, reviews, and information about our national park journeys.